Let's get the hood dropped down and I think we're, uh oh, we got problems over here. Let's shut this thing down. There is a little bit of uh, frozen coolant in there. If I'm looking right at uh, Does this make anybody want to start a business? <laughs> Welcome to a frozen TriStar digging. It is cold today. It's 16 degrees right now, and the wind chill is like five degrees. Last night it was eight degrees and a wind chill below zero. That's not right for Tennessee. <laughs> That's uh, more up north weather for uh, for those folks up there. But that, down in here we're not used to that, and it is cold. If you saw in the last video, what behind me here, you see the Mack truck sitting there with the trailer hooked to it. The intent yesterday was to get the truck and trailer hooked up and to go pick up the 313, move it to another job site where I'm going to start clearing some property and burning. So it's going to be a neat little video there, clearing some property and burning the brush and debris and uh, getting that place looking nice. But the problem was, and as I mentioned in that last video, this would be the first time that I've used the Mack truck and it didn't go well at all. Uh, anyway, what happened in that was I got hooked up and I backed up to a certain degree there and the ground was already thawed out, which I thought it was still frozen and it started spinning. This trailer was in the way. Anyway, it's just a mess. I got stuck, I decided just to quit. And also what happened was I've already messed up and knocked two lug nuts, well, they're just plastic caps, but uh, I already knocked those off because I backed into the wood pile there. Not a good start at all uh, for the first time using the Mack truck. Today, since the ground is frozen, my intent is to get the truck started. It's gonna be a cold start because uh, of the frigid temperatures right now and get this thing started and warmed up. And then we gotta go over the top of the hill there. I'm gonna walk over there, I suppose, uh, where that house is being built. I've done a lot of work there. Get the 313 started up, get it warmed up, drive it back across the field and get it in here to where I can uh, get it loaded up, up there near the house. That's the lowdown on uh, where we are and what we're gonna try to do today. I think if things go well to that point, I'm gonna try to haul this machine up to that job site and get it unloaded. Only time will tell <laughs> if that's gonna happen. So let's get this thing started up and see what we can do today. And Diesel has been eyeing this truck ever since I got it. He hadn't even got to ride in it yet. Uh, but I think we're going to get to go with us on the road trip today if we get it going. Let's get the oil checked in here. I did check it yesterday, but this is a new truck to me, and uh, I just want to make sure I keep all this stuff checked till I get really comfortable with this truck. Not meaning that you don't check your oil, but uh, you just get to a point where you get more comfortable knowing exactly what's going on with the, with the equipment that you've got. Okay, this side looks good. Let's do a little bit more of a walk around on the truck here and make sure everything else looks good. I don't see any leaks or problems in the engine. All that looks good. And that thing is going to be rattling here in a few minutes. Boy, getting that thing started up as cold as it is. Look underneath the truck, I don't see anything leaks. Uh, tires are all pumped up good. No problems with those. Everything's still hooked up here good. Looking good on that. Let's take a look underneath here. See if we see any issues underneath. And like I said, I really keep an eye on this truck till I get real good and comfortable. And But like I said, you don't just take it for granted, but on a new piece of equipment you really want to keep an eye on things look good under there let's take a look underneath the front of it here everything looks good up here no issues with anything here tires are good the brake pads are good oh i ran into the hood that didn't feel good And everything on this side is looking good as well. Take a peek underneath the back side of it here. Brake pads are good. No leaks or problems. All right, here we go. We're we'll, gonna uh, hit the key on this thing and see what happens. Well, that's not good. My new camera is laying here on the ground. I had that in my front bib pocket, but it fell out. 
while I'm thinking about that, I want to show you this new camera that I got. This is called an Osmo Pocket 3 from DJI. This is going to be a really cool camera going forward here on the channel. It also has a wireless mic. The thing I like about that wireless mic is the receiver is built into the uh, camera itself, whereas the camera that I'm recording on that you see now, it has an external receiver plugged into the side of it. So this camera is pretty cool. You just flip this thing over here to the side. That activates the camera, turns it on, and then you just simply hit a button right here to start recording. What's cool though is it got a gimbal with it. If you see that camera up on top, that is a three axis gimbal uh, that goes up and down and sideways back and forth. So that is a really cool feature. And what I like about this camera is that I can set this camera and lock onto this truck, lock onto the dozer or skid steer or whatever piece of equipment I'm in. And this camera will follow me everywhere I go with that. That's gonna give us some real neat footage going forward with the, with the uh, channel. And I'm excited about that. So it's gonna, I think it's gonna work out really good and give us some good video. I've brought you in the truck before, I think. Uh, and I still haven't done a full, complete walk around on the truck. I will at some point. But this truck is absolutely clean on the inside and the outside. Really, really good shape for a 2007 Mac. I'll turn the key on there and let things warm up. And we got that dreaded beeper going, showing we got low air pressure. First thing we want to check when we get this thing started up is oil pressure. Make sure we got good oil pressure. So here we go. Boy, don't want to. It's alive, it's alive. We've got uh, 60 pounds of oil pressure, that's perfect. And now that I'm gonna get out of the cab here because that, uh, that air pressure warning is going off. That baby's riding pretty good up there right now, it's cold. But it started good, it's warming up, and she is blowing the smoke right now. We'll give that truck a few minutes there to get warmed up and uh, get everything going, and we'll see if we can get this trailer broke free from the ground. Make sure the brakes and all are gonna release on it. And uh, I think what I'll do then is make sure that I can get the truck and trailer out. And, and then if I can, then I'll go get the 313. One of the problems I had uh, in the last video was this trailer was in the way and I really probably ought to move that, get that out of the way. I think what I'll do right now is go start the skid steer, cold start on it, and I've got an attachment for the front of the skid steer that has a ball on it. I'll just come in here with a skid steer, hook up to that trailer, and pull that thing out of the way. Probably put it over there on the other side of the truck. Let's go get the skid steer started up and uh, see what else we can get into. And I actually had the blade, the light duty blade or light materials blade, snow blade, whatever you want to call it. I had it on the uh, skid steer there because we were expecting snow and right here where I'm at, we didn't get anything. But other places got eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches of snow. But I didn't get to use this. I'm anxious to use it. I've had this thing for, gosh, years. I bought it when I was chicken farming and running the farm. Uh, had it over there and used it very, very little. I probably had this thing six, eight years, I guess and I've never got to use it. Maybe we'll get a snow one day and we'll get some video pushing some snow here in Tennessee. All right, here we go. Let's get this thing uh, going and see what she does. hooking those hoses and get ready to unhook this thing uh, i had a question from a, a viewer about this blade ask if it was a fixed blade or if it was a spring loaded blade and it is a spring loaded blade and you see those springs right here there's one on the other side and it also has locks that will actually lock the blade in place so the springs won't work be activated reason for that springs is if you're pushing snow or something and you've got those pins out and you hit something this blade will actually fold down and flip back up to keep from breaking stuff. So it's really important if you're doing that kind of work that you got these pins out because it can't do that if those pins are actually in place. And it's got uh, two hydraulic cylinders, one on each side to work the blade back and forth. This is a Blue Diamond brand. It weighs 544 pounds. That's what this blade weighs. So needless to say, it is thin metal 
and it's not meant for some heavy work it's basically just meant for snow and light materials skid steer has revved it up its engine rpm to get warmed up and it won't be long for that's done let's go check on the truck see how the max doing it's quit rolling smoke that's a good sign Get the hood dropped down, and I think we're. Uh oh, we got problems over here. We've got antifreeze blowing out the hole there. I don't know what's wrong with that. Let's shut this thing down. That I don't understand. It's blowing antifreeze out the cap for some reason that don't look like a good sign what does that mean that's not good I've got to do a little bit of checking to see what that's going to be initially my thoughts are that maybe the uh, antifreeze circulating through the engine is sludged up kind of gelled or, or cold and it's putting antifreeze back into the reservoir but not letting it go through the other way uh oh this ain't good be back in a few minutes when i figure out what's going on with that a little bit of an update now where we are i called my buddy lucas the mechanic you've seen on the channel several times and talked to him a little bit about it and my concern was that there was some freezing in the engine or freezing in a line that would prevent water from going into the engine but it was letting it pump water back in or the coolant back into the reservoir. First thing he asked me though to resolve that was, was the coolant frozen in the reservoir before I started the truck? And during the walk around, I looked at that and it wasn't. The coolant, and he, and he had a good point. If it was gonna be frozen in the engine or if it's gonna be frozen in one of the lines, it would be frozen in that plastic coolant reservoir first. That, that made me feel a little bit better. So the next thing that we talked about was possibly there was compression getting into the coolant system and building up pressure in that. And what he had me do was take the metal pressure cap off and put my hand over it for a little bit and uh, make sure there wasn't any pressure building against my hand from uh, compression from the engine getting into that system. And that's where we are right now at this point uh, is I'm letting the engine run there and uh, building up some temperature. And another thing, the engine didn't even run but for, I don't know, five minutes or less. Uh, and so there wasn't enough time for the engine to build up enough temperature or heat to be an issue. And then another thing we talked about was maybe a stuck thermostat. Maybe the thermostat was stuck and wasn't letting coolant go into the engine. But I, honestly, the engine didn't run long enough for that uh, thermostat to even open. Right now what I'm waiting on, it's been running for several minutes. I'm waiting to see if we're going to build pressure in that tank again. Or he said it might just been a fluke, something weird happened all of a sudden. But uh, we're going to let it run for a little bit and then see what happens with that. Matter of fact, I need to go over here and check on the skid steer and uh, see what's going on with it. I tell you right now, there's a lot of uh, trades and uh, work that's affected by cold weather. Excavation is one of those. Wow, cold weather and uh, it's just hard on equipment. It's hard on uh, a lot of stuff. Anyway, skid steer's running fine. Let's check it and see what the temperature is on it, and then we'll probably just shut it down until we figure out what's wrong with the dump truck. All right. We are 167 on the temperature of the engine, and we got 82 on the hydraulics. That hydraulic temperature will take a while for it to warm up anyway. We've got enough engine warmth. I'm satisfied. This thing will be fine if we get to use it here in a little while. We are going to throttle it down and shut it off. That'll be available to us here in a little while. Subject to getting this truck checked out. Going right with it. We'll go back over here and uh, what I'm gonna do is gonna ease that pressure cap off of that metal reservoir and see if we've got any pressure build up in that right now. One thing that I did notice on the walk around this morning, and you probably go back and actually scan back yourself and look at it, was that plastic coolant reservoir, it only had just a small amount in the bottom of it. 
But what has happened since this is going on, that has filled up and you notice that it was spewing that uh, coolant out of that plastic cap. I don't know what was going on, but anyway, uh, let's get this cap off and see what's going on, see if there's any pressure in it now. Now, first thing I wanna do is check the temperature again. We've got, uh, almost got sufficient air pressure. That'll quit beeping in a minute. But our uh, temperature is right here. We've got a good 62, 63 pounds of oil pressure. And the temperature gauge is right here. And it's not, uh, it's not even changed yet. It's not moved. I sure hope there's no pressure on that this time. Kind of ease that off just a little bit. No pressure at all, none. And actually, now that I'm looking down in there, that coolant, there is a little bit of uh, frozen coolant in there. If I'm looking right, I need to get a little stick and see if that's what's going on. Down inside that tank, it looks like there's a little frozen uh, coolant. Yeah, I need something that sticks. That stick's really too fragile to, to do anything. I need something a little stronger than that. This little stick right here ought to do it. I just need to make sure I get all the dirt and splinters and stuff off of it. I don't want that to get down in there. Really need a little piece of metal. But this ought to do just for my test, see what it looks like. Actually what I'm looking at that I thought, thought looked like ice was uh, a little bit of rust. Inside that tank there, there's a ridge that comes up in the center of it that's a little bit rusty and flaky and it kind of looked like ice. So that's not ice and I'm thankful for that. That's a good sign. And before all this cold weather come, I did, uh, I checked the antifreeze and everything that I've got. And this truck in particular, had a sub-zero rating on its antifreeze, so it, it should have been perfectly fine for that. A little bit scary start here this morning, but it looks like it has resolved itself. I don't know what it was, but uh, I think we're okay. Let's get the cap put back on it and uh, let it build up some warmth. I ain't got no lie to tell you, that was a little scary. some reason or other our air pressure is not building up like it ought to either there we go needed just a little bit of acceleration in our engine rpm and it boosted that air pressure on up our temperature hand is now starting to raise up a little bit so that's good we're seeing a little bit of an increase in temperature oil pressure 62 63 it looks good everything else is looking fine else that I've noticed here this morning is you know from that last video I mentioned it wouldn't go into reverse and because there's a switch right here that switches between forward and reverse no matter what gear this truck is in you push in the clutch and stop it you flip that down and it puts it in reverse and you can back up no matter what gear but just like yesterday there must be something going on with the airline Maybe there's some condensation in it or something, but I'm not letting air pressure get to the part that switches the gear. So when I flip that down, the reverse light should come on and it should the uh, backup warning buzzer should start going off. That's an issue uh, in itself. Cold temperatures are not my friend. And I just now noticed you guys have got a little bit of, <laughs> y'all got a little antifreeze on you. Let me get that off. All right, can y'all see better now? I'm gonna check for pressure one more time, and then uh, we're gonna leave it running to hopefully thaw out that airline that uh, won't let it go in reverse. And then we're gonna move that trailer. All right, no pressure whatsoever. There's very little antifreeze in this metal tank but this uh, plastic reservoir is completely full. A 
When I went to move there, I noticed when I pushed in the trailer release for the, to release the air on the back, I uh, started losing air pressure. And boy, I tell you, it just keeps on building up on me. Now then, I'm losing the air pressure in this uh, connection right here for some reason. Maybe it's just not uh, put together real good or what. But it was working fine yesterday. Let's try this, fix it, and see if we can fix it. We got air to there. Let's go ahead and turn it off the uh, air supply to the back so we can unhook that and check it. All right. Shut the air off to it now, then let's uh, take this apart and see what's going on with it. So these things have rubber uh, connectors in there, little rubber grommets on this side, and there's one on this side. And you simply just put these together and twist them together. But for some reason, it's not, all right, now that ought to work. That is sealed up good, and it's touching the stop in there and down here as well. That ought to help, that ought to fix it. Let's try it. Climb back in the truck, push in the release. All right, let's see what we got. No, still leaking. Oh uh, yeah, still leaking, if you can hear that. Air's coming from right in there. I've got some new rubber grommets for these. I'm gonna change those out right quick, put this back together, see what happens. Okay, this is the rubber grommets I was talking about. It's just a little thin piece of rubber that goes in there and the way that works, this goes in one side and this goes in the other side and they just clamp together and create a seal for that air to go through there. I'm gonna change out the one on the trailer first because it's in the worst shape. I believe it's kind of flattened out, and doesn't look good. So we'll get this one out and uh, put the new one in. And if that don't work, then I will uh, put the new one in on the truck side. And that is extremely cold and not wanting to come out. There we go, got it out. Now then, what I need to do to get the new one in a little easier is I need to find a little bit of grease on something and put a little bit of grease on this side right here and work that down in there to get it to go in. Let me find some grease. Surely there's some grease on something around here. Oh yeah, right there, son. Now I got a little grease on that. Get that spread around there. And that should go in a whole lot easier than it just came out. Let's try that. There we go. Got a little bit boogered up right there on that side. Let me get that flip back out. There we go. Now then, I'll take a little bit of that grease and put it around on that face of that and that should help them slide together better. Maybe it'll seal. I'm gonna go up there in the truck and uh, put some air back to here. Y'all holler if it starts leaking. <laughs> I'll be back check on it in a second. All right, I didn't hear y'all holler, so uh, <laughs> it looks like we're in good shape. Well, till I moved it, and now it's still leaking just a little bit. Let me wiggle it around here a little bit, see if I can get that stopped. Well, I'm gonna have to let the pressure off of it. Well, that was actually uh, leaking still a little bit when I moved it. I wanna show you the difference between an old one and a new one. If you can see the one on the, this side right here is completely flat and worn. You see how this one's got a little bit of a, a roll or a bulge to it? That helps that to seal better. I'm gonna go ahead and change and put this one on the truck side and uh, that way I've got both of them new. Cause this one's just flat as well. That one came out a lot easier. But there's the one I just took out and you can see that one is flat also. Let's get this new one put in there and we'll be good to go. Gotta go get a little more grease. Oh 
Okay, we got that in there good. Put a little grease on that top side. And that should be good to go. That should take care of it. I better put my knife up before I forget it. Let's go apply some air and uh, hopefully we got that fixed. There we go. I don't hear it. All right, that is good and sealed. We're good to go so on that. So already you saw all the problems that I've had this morning. And um, that's just life of the excavation business. It's actually warming up a little bit. My head's getting hot. Uh, does this make anybody want to start a business? <laughs> you know, this is common with all businesses. There's issues and things you got to deal with, but you just got to keep working through them. You know, it's frustrating and things happen. Uh, we already had some excitement this morning with that coolant spewing out of that tank, air leak back here. Uh, yeah, but we're just getting started. Let's see what else happens today. Now then, uh, let's see if the reverse situation has resolved itself it did yesterday it just kind of started working on its own but temperatures were rising through the day oh yeah we're good and it finally started working and what i think is happening with that is the engine temperature getting warm it's letting warm air from the radiator blowing heat back off the engine back underneath the truck it's probably thawing that out i think when temperatures get above freezing i don't think i'll have an issue with that reverse switch but we'll, we'll keep looking at it and stay posted on it anyway the engine temperature is uh, just a little over 100, about 125, I suppose, right in there. It's still way down in the blue. We are in great shape on that. We have oil pressure of 60 pounds. Excellent. Everything else is looking good. I'm going to shut this truck off, and we're going to get that trailer moved beside us. And then we're going to try to get this truck turned around. Something else, when I turn the engine off, I've got a little bit of a air leak around this little deer right here, I used to know what that thing's called, but I don't really know what it's called anymore, but it's leaking around that. When the air bleeds completely off, I, I'm pretty sure that unscrews. And uh, I'll see if there's a, something in there that is keeping that from sealing up, maybe an O-ring or something. It's just a small leak, but it needs to be fixed. Here to my equipment pile, I got up against the woods here. Let me find that trailer mover. Uh, I think it's right, yeah, it's right here. So that's a trailer mover. It's got a ball and a hitch on the end of it there. We'll drop that blade off and hook up to that and uh, see what we can do about getting this trailer moved. Hydraulics on this thing are extremely cold. Very sluggish and don't want to move. So you got to be careful with them so you don't do a lot of damage. That's what's real important about starting up a machine and getting the hydraulics warmed up and the engine warmed up is because it can cause damage or excessive wear if, uh, if it does not up to the right operating temperatures. One thing I've done this kit here that I haven't mentioned is uh, I, I replaced that uh, quick attach cylinder down there on the plate of the attachment. That way that I can simply do just what I did, pull up, push that cylinder, release the uh, attachment, and then go over to another one, pick it up and lock it back. I went a long time with that thing broken. I just didn't want to spend the thousand dollars to get it replaced, uh, but I'm glad I did. It's uh, it, it makes life so much simpler. You can just pull in here, get your next attachment just like that, pick it up, and you don't have to get out of the machine and uh, beat and bang and get those things locked in place. You just simply push a button right up here and it locks back in place. Now then, let's go move a trailer. Jack stands were actually froze the ground a little bit. I don't need to hit my truck. Okay, that is out of the way for now. It's in a really awkward position. <laughs> uh, wow. Anyway, I'll uh, move that after I get this truck turned around.
climb in the Mac here, get started up, and the uh, plan is to, I guess I'm gonna pull it up a little bit and I'm gonna try to turn that trailer right in there. The ground is actually starting to thaw out just a little bit from the sunshine. And then I'm gonna try to get it pulled up in there and back it right back down in here where I can get on this gravel instead of in the dirt. Started up just fine. Let's uh, get the air to the uh, brake lines where they need to go and let's pull up a little bit. I think maybe my trailer brakes might be a little bit locked up. So let's rock it and see if we can get those free. Yeah, there they go. All right, we're free. Let's get this thing moved. I've got to kind of hurry. That ground is thawing out on me. Put the lockers in, get those axles hooked together, and uh, let's see if we can get her back in there. I'm a lower gear than that, though. Y'all got a little mud in y'all on that one. Wow. Let's try this again. Oh, I was slipping right there. Slipping in the mud a little bit. All right, success. We are finally in a place to where we can get pulled out. I got rocks, uh, pad area where the truck is sitting now. Should get out of here with no issues whatsoever. And that's worked out just fine. I think what we'll do now is we'll walk over the hill there and get the excavator, get it warmed up, get it back over here in a position where it can be loaded. And that truck really needs some fuel in it. It is on E. I think we'll unhook the trailer and we'll go on our first road trip in this truck to go get some fuel for the upcoming week. <laughs> oh, Ruby's got diesel's ball. <laughs> We're gonna have trouble here. <laughs> Where'd the ball go? Diesel, here. Yeah, I've made it up here to the 313 now. Let's get the uh, oil and hydraulic fluid checked in it. Make sure it's good and we'll get this, get this thing started up. The oil is good. The hydraulic oil is good. It's right here in a little sock glass. That is good. Let's get this thing started up and get it warming up. And then I'm gonna show you a little, uh, oh man. The first mistake was the 313 that caused some damage. And uh, old Lindsay at Smithworks, I know is gonna give me a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> you know accidents happen it's frustrating that it did uh, i've already checked on the price to replace it and it's like 800 bucks plus tax i've got a plan though to kind of mend it so it doesn't look as bad as it does now but we'll show you that in just a minute actually that sun has got this cab good and warm in here just check the temperature and it is 19 degrees. Uh, let's fire this cat up, see what happens. Oh, ain't nothing to it. Fire dried up. 
This uh, 313 has a auto warm function to it that it'll go into in just a minute when it, it uh, give me an option to do auto warm up. And what it does is it raises the engine RPMs up and then in just a few seconds, about a minute, it will put the hydraulics into a uh, warm up mode. All right, now then it's time for confession. Uh, what happened was I was bringing the machine over here, the same route that I just walked over here, through that gate, coming over here. And uh, before I brought it, I was checking the uh, engine oil and the hydraulic oil, make sure everything was good with that. And to do that, you gotta open that compartment that I just showed you. And when you open this compartment, it can be a little bit aggravating. It's made out of fiberglass, so you open it. It's not a big deal to get it open, but for some reason or other, these latches don't want to work that well. And you can shut it and think that it's shut, but it's not. It'll come right open like that. Uh, so what you have to do is you really have to push on it to get it locked. And like then, it didn't do it again either. Here's what happened. I was coming through that gate. I didn't know it. The door was open. It caught that gate post right here. Bent it back and split it right there. Split it there and split it right there. Let me shut it and I can show you a little better. This is the back side of it right here. Oh, and that's ugly. Oh my gosh, it just it just split it and broke it. And this panel right here, not counting the sticker, not counting the hardware, is $800 plus tax. My plan to fix it is to come on to the back side. Well, I say fix it, make it look better. Cut all this jagged fiberglass that's right in through here, keeping it from coming back together. And then once I do that, this crack should come back together fairly decent to where it don't look near as bad. You can see that black fiberglass that's keeping it from coming together. That's my plan. I'll probably eventually get it fixed, but for right now, in the winter time, I'm not gonna do that right now. What I'm gonna have to do to shut it is hit it really hard to get it to shut. Now then it shut that time. And to be fair to me, I actually, when I checked the oil and the hydraulic oil, I pushed it shut and I noticed it didn't latch. So I opened it back up and slammed it and then I pulled on it and it felt latched. So it could have been latched and it kind of popped loose as I was going down through there or I just didn't check it well enough the second time. Anyway, it's broke. I hate it, uh, but life goes on. We gotta keep working, keep going, keep doing the things that we do. We'll climb up in here now and uh, see how this thing is going. If you notice on the screen there, it says E-Fence, hydraulic oil temperature low. It basically sets up an electronic fence, meaning that it's not gonna let you do uh, much with it until it heats up that hydraulic oil where it wants it at the right temperature. But that'll come up to uh, temp here in just a minute, and then we're gonna head right back over the hill and get it back over to the house. While that thing's warming up, it just kicked in for the hydraulic temperature to warm up. Let's take a sneak peek at this retaining wall. Uh, you've seen this progress on the channel a little bit, but I've gotten a little bit more done, and uh, I've got my blocks in. That's why I brought this machine over here. I've got all my blocks to finish the job sitting over there to finish this wall. Let's climb down here without uh, killing ourselves. Uh and uh, take a look at this wall. Most of what you saw on a previous video was this wall right here, getting most of that done to where it is now. Uh, what I didn't put on the video is in a hurry, trying to get this done so they could start doing their work here, was I got this side started really well. I've already got my footers built on that side and my footer built on this side to set blocks in there. And the rest of it will go really quick, just stacking the blocks, backfilling putting the drainage pipe behind it and such and so on, getting it backfilled. That is a sneak peek of uh, what's coming up in a future video to finish this wall here on both sides. It'll probably take a uh, better part of two days to finish this wall and get it done. We'll walk over here and take a look at the blocks that I got hauled in. I think there's 23 of them sitting here ready to go. There's my blocks that I've got left to put in and uh, those come on two different loads. Got all these here, got my corner blocks, got my half blocks, bottom blocks, top blocks, everything there. We should be good to go on finishing up we that wall. good to go. The temperature is up where it needs to be. And uh, let's see if Diesel wants to ride with us or if Diesel is going to walk. You wanna ride? Let's go. Get in. Hold up. Here. Nope, he wants to walk. So we'll let him do that and uh, here we go.
spin this thing around so I can drive it going the right way instead of pulling back on the levers I can push forward now then we go a lot of operators with these uh, controls in front of us right here a lot of operators use their feet to go forwards and backwards. I always like to use my feet when I'm going forwards to steer or put myself in the direction I want to go. But for whatever reason, I never have liked uh, driving with my feet going backwards or pushing back on the controls. And I'll show you that here in just a second. I just, it just doesn't feel comfortable to me with my feet doing that. And I just always grab it with my hand. I usually can drive it with one hand though. And to do that, you just push back on these controls with your feet. The 308 was a lot harder to mash the pedals down. It, it just wasn't comfortable for me. I can do just the same with my hand, driving it with one hand and running the, the controls with my other hand. But uh, that's kind of how I do it. I see a lot of people do both directions with their feet, and um, but it's just really preference what you want to do. I've actually seen people that are so comfortable driving with their feet that, they'll, that, that they've, cut those, uh, they've cut these off and that's all they have is the feet. But we all do it a little differently. I've got to take this fence down and uh, crawl through here and put that fence back up. Y'all have met Bowser before. Uh, he's my great Pyrenees male here. And then Ruby was the all white uh, Pyrenees you saw a minute ago. She, uh, she's a puppy. She's just like eight months old, nine months old now. And I don't know where she went, but she'll be back over here in just a minute. And uh, we'll introduce y'all to Ruby. Let's check her out for a few minutes. She might be nine, ten months old now. She's a big old girl for her age. She's gonna be a big one. And these are great Pyrenees. If you're not familiar with this breed, these are dogs are excellent guardian dogs for uh, livestock. They ain't worth a dime for minding you know in obedience, because but they don't listen at all. But uh, that's old Ruby Jean and Bowser. The machine up here now to where i can load it if i want to take it later today or or at least get it ready to load uh monday get ready to go to that job the uh, bucket has ice in it and lots of it froze up I think what i'll do now is have a little bit of lunch and uh we'll get that dump truck unhooked from the trailer and uh, take a little road trip first road trip in the dump truck we'll get some fuel in it get this trailer unhooked and uh oh that might be bad that's probably froze up Oh, it is. <clears throat> maybe I can break it loose. Anyway, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Get this trailer unhooked. We're going to go get some fuel one way or the other. Okay, I finally got that thing unhooked. Good night, that thing's froze up. Didn't want to go in there. And this is gonna be Diesel's first ride in the truck. Let's see how he likes it. All right, let's get this thing fired up and get down the road. It's a build up now and everything looks good. Diesel said he's ready to go. I think he likes a new truck. Unfortunately, there is nothing in this truck behind me that uh, has any metal on it that I can stick this camera to. And that's gonna make it difficult to uh, do some videos from in cab. But I think for now, I got y'all stuck, 
to the door frame, which that might work for now, but I'm gonna have to fix something. So we can get some in cab video. Oh, we're spinning right now, spinning. Wow. Let me lock in these uh, axles and see if that'll help us. No, we're spinning. Good night. I thought old anchor got stuck easy. I don't know. This thing here may be, uh, may be as bad or worse than anchor. Stuck right there. Look, right there in that little bit of grassy area. Anyway, we got the axles locked in. That's what that beeping sound is. And uh, we can unhook those now. We're on our way. We are gonna to have to fix old diesel a bed over there. He's only got that little old skinny seat set in, and uh, the other truck he had a big old, big old bed. So we'll have to take care of that for him. We are gone. I tell you right now, this truck shifts a lot differently than my other truck. So this truck has an eight-speed transmission uh, with the low, low gears as well, uh, and it shifts a lot differently than my international truck because it was a ten-speed. And the biggest difference is when you shift this out of uh, low range and go into high range, and the other truck, I would come from here and come back over and come back down. This truck, you gotta come over and go up to get back in that next gear. Anyway, we'll get it figured out. Uh, we are on our way up to uh, Etowah, Tennessee and uh, fill this thing up with fuel. What do you think, buddy? You like it? Going down the road here, I just want to mention something that I come across in another video. I was actually using a, uh, a headset or a headphones that had two earmuffs on both sides, and uh, there was a comment in the video that I needed to be that I may need to be careful uh, wearing those headphones in the videos. And I got to thinking about that. Thought, well, that you know, it may be right. It could be, could it may not be legal to have both ears covered when you're driving a tr commercial truck and. Back uh, a few weeks ago when I was in Indiana at that DOT training that Officer Hoover did up our Dirt Perfect's channel, I asked him about that and he said, you know, it's, there, there's nothing that I know of in Indiana anyway that, uh, that prohibits you from wearing uh, headphones like that, having both ears covered. He said, actually, you know, if you're deaf, a person can drive deaf. And he had a good point there. Before that, I actually bought, went ahead and bought this headset with one earmuff. And so when I got back, I started checking uh, the laws, and that guy's not wrong. In some states in the country, uh, you can't wear headphones with both ears covered. But for Tennessee, you can. So I am legal wearing those headphones with two ears covered, and I will use those in the other dump truck in Anchor because that truck is just so loud. But in this truck, this, uh, this set here will work just fine. That just goes to say uh, we need to check and make sure in our state what's legal. But for truck drivers that are traveling across country, moving through different states, uh, they've got to really keep up with what's going on in all the states, I suppose. But for me in Tennessee, we are legal to have both ears covered with those headphones. Anyway, that's a side note. Just want to say that I was going up the road and, uh, you know, I'm learning a lot when it comes to commercial vehicles and driving dump trucks. And that, But that's something you got to stay uh, ahead of the game and know what's legal and what's not. And case in point, when I bought this truck, I actually contacted Tennessee Highway Patrol and got in touch with a sergeant with uh, commercial vehicle enforcement. And uh, we're gonna go over what we talked about and what he said is legal for me in this tandem axle dump truck. That's a little different than it was in the single axle dump truck. And uh, all the requirements that I've got to go by and the things that I've got to look at. But we'll take care of that in another video. Let's get on up the road here and get this fuel bought and get back to the house. Get some fuel in this thing and uh, head back. What I like to do, if possible, is use both sides of the pump. That way I can run two nozzles at the same time. I guess it kind of <laughs> aggravates somebody if they pull up there wanting some fuel, but uh. There's about uh, six or eight more pumps here. I guess it'll be all right. We'll get some fuel in this thing. These these pumps, we use my credit card shuts off at $125 on each side. 
that'll be $250 worth of fuel in this one tank here and then uh, they'll equal themselves out and that'll be enough for now. We're not using it as much in the winter time as we will be in the summertime. It'll be enough fuel. Got it. We are ready for the maiden voyage with the Mac dump truck now. I've got the 313 loaded on the trailer. Got the stick chained down, got four corners chained down. I got a chain across the tracks here in the middle. And uh, I got it crisscrossed up here in the front. That is taken care of. I do need to uh, cover my exhaust on that though. I'll get that taken care of. And uh, we'll get the mic fired up and we'll be ready to go. I also wanted to mention that I got the fuel put in the truck there. My battery cut off before I finished uh, talking about what I got, but uh, I put $250 of fuel in that tank right there, which was about 68 gallons. And it almost filled it completely up. It's probably up to about right there. So I would say it's probably a 75 gallon tank. That would be my guess. I uh, figure probably would fill that completely up. So I suppose that uh, $500 worth of fuel would fill it completely up. Wow. go up the road just a little bit turn around and come back and and back into where I'm standing now that way I'll be unloading machine with it uh, the back end kind of uphill a little bit, be a little bit. excavator off the trailer now and got it into here and I started to park it right here but then I realized that uh, these tree limbs could fall on it so I moved it dropped it off down into here 
and the project we're going to be working on at the church here uh, the property starts right there where that big tree is there's a fence line that comes down through here and all of this wooded area most everything well pretty much everything you see in there that wooded area has got to come down and be burned and my burn area is going to be on the other side of this uh, building here over there where you see those cedar trees and even those tallest trees you see in the background are coming down there's a lot of danger and as a matter of fact these, these trees you see down here right now came down during the last uh, windstorm and fortunately they fell this way and not that way fall on the building and fortunately it didn't fall on this uh, utility line power line and knock it down but they had a good bit of damage here with the wind and the biggest problem with this is they don't want these trees falling on their building and on the church so that's our job and uh, we'll get that started monday morning and it's been a while since i've done any land clearing and been a real good while since i've done any burning so i'm looking forward to this it's kind of one of the jobs i really like to do so i will see y'all monday morning right, today's a good day i got johnny up here putting uh, stickers on the dump truck and he is doing a fantastic job we'll take a look at what he's already done putting the stickers on the door and then uh <laughs> He's got to tell you the story of how he got started in the business. And while we're walking around taking a look at those other stickers, I always find it fascinating and interesting how people get started in doing what they do. And, uh, you know, I just kind of off the cuff said, hey, Johnny, how'd you get started? How long have you been putting stickers on uh, vehicles and trucks and stuff? And uh, that's pretty good. So we'll take a look at this passenger side door. And uh, I really like that block style lettering. And that's actually the sticker. And this is the paint actually from the door. So it's not a two colored sticker. He just puts this outline uh, on there and uses the door color to, to come through that sticker. That one looks good. The driver's side door actually looks a lot better. It's a little bit bigger and I like that. And uh, he's putting the uh, back stickers on right now. So that is looking really good. Let's take a look at what he's doing back here. And we're gonna put uh, the McNally on that bar there and put the excavating on that bottom door. So Johnny, let's talk about how you got started in business. Well, my dad, when I was younger, had a body shop. And uh, when I was six years old, he left to go into town to pick up some stuff one day from the shop. And while he was gone, I lettered the shop truck doors. He had a green GMC truck. Now, was this a paying job or this is just a, this is just your first job? Was it a free job? It, it was a, every job I ever done for my dad was a free job. Okay. <laughs> Even when I grew up and worked in the body shop, most of the time it was free job. But uh, all the guys that worked there thought I'd get killed, but I, I lettered that truck, this green truck, the truck doors with pink fingernail polish <laughs> uh, that I might have took out of my mama's box in the house. Uh. And. Uh, they all thought that daddy would kill me when he got back, but to be honest, he kind of lit up like his name was in lights. He was real <laughs> proud of it and, and kept a picture of it for a long time. That's been nearly 60 years ago, so. Uh, so your first job was six years old and you're still doing it today? Yeah, I'll be 65 in April if the good Lord lets me make it. <laughs> and, Tell us, uh, give us your advice on marriage too. <laughs> what you tell me? Oh, well, marriage is pretty simple. You just, she's always right, and uh, you pick your battles and don't argue over stuff that don't matter. And, uh, I've not had a, I've not had a real argument with my wife in 32 years. It might be because 32 years ago, I quit drinking. <laughs> That'll do uh, it. I might, might should have quit a lot sooner, but... If I had it, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, and I think everything happens for a reason. Yeah. All right, y'all got the words of wisdom there on how to start your business. You just get you some pink fingernail polish from your mama's, from your mama's stuff, and go paint your daddy's door. That that is good. That is a funny story, and that just I guess that just kind of shows you, and uh, it's kind of funny to me because I guess lettering trucks was in his blood because at six years old that was his desire to uh, to do that. On this back tailgate, uh, we had started to do solid white on the back of it, but then he did this block style with the, uh, looks like he did the doors and just did white outline. And the black of the tailgate is actually showing through the stickers. And I think that looks fantastic. Johnny, I appreciate you did a great job. It looks good. Thank you. You're the only person I got to make happy today. 
You heard it straight from him. I'm the only one he's got to make happy today, and uh, so that's All right, fantastic. I thought I was through talking to Johnny there until, until he took his long sleeve shirt off and I saw his t-shirt, so we got to take a look at that. <laughs> Have a willy nice day. Where'd you get that shirt at? Uh, that's a Christmas present from my daughter-in-law. I'm a big Willie Nelson fan. <laughs> And this smudge right here is yeah. a, a Hershey's Kiss from my granddaughter this morning <laughs> where she had Hershey's Kisses instead of her eggs for breakfast. Oh, well, that's all right for a granddaughter though, ain't it? Yeah, she's three, so she gets by with about anything. <laughs> I guess so. I've got a grandson that's a little over two, so it's the same way. He's going to get away with anything. Yep. i got seven, and they're all pretty rotten. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, y'all have a really nice day. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video there. That was kind of like a day in the life of kind of video. Uh, that was a one hour video, almost an hour, uh, of my whole day. And I just kind of put a snapshot of that day into one little video. And it was filled with events, different things that happened during that day, and my goodness. But that's the way life is, and that's the problems that we have in life and the things that we deal with. And it's just part of everyday life to be that way. And you know when those times happen in our lives as a Christian too, or even as unbelievers, we have situations, we get into desperate times, we, we get frustrated and confused, and, and as a Christian we fall away from our relationship with the Lord. And this message today really comes from a comment that I got from a previous video, uh, and, and it says this. It says, I must admit I was falling farther from the Lord, I need to climb back up. That is a message from a person who, uh, just as I struggle, struggle in our faith, we fall away from a relationship with the Lord. And that comment got me to thinking about for this uh, video message about the prodigal son. And that message is found in uh, Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 12 and runs through the, the following verses there. But this story is about a young man uh, who wanted his inheritance early. And it's, the Bible tells us, teaches us that he asked his father for that inheritance. So he went and says he journeyed to a far country and he wasted that living. He wasted his inheritance on prodigal living. And it got to a point where he had run out of money. There was a famine in the land and that the only choice he had for work was to feed the pigs. And then he remembered his father's house. This is important. We want to read the passage of scriptures here. In verse 17, it says, but when he came to himself, meaning that he came to his senses, so to say, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Verse 18 was his plan. In verse 17, he realized that he was a sinner. He realized that he had done his father wrong. He realized that he had done wrong before, before God and that he needed to make amends of that. So it says he came to his senses. He came to realize that he needed to repent, church word, meaning that he needed to turn around and he needed to go in a different direction. Now listen to what it says there. Verse 18 was his plan. He says, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, meaning sinned against God, and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. This young man uh, thought that he had a plan there that he would go back to his father's house just simply to be a servant, no longer worthy to be a son. But God has a different plan for that. When we return to God in fellowship with him because there's an estranged relationship, God has a plan for that, and he speaks about that in this parable in the following verses. So listen to what it says. In verse 20, it talks about this. He says, He arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him. That's speaking about God seeing us in a position where we desire to come back in that fellowship. And he had compassion on him, and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Verse 21, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. And so that's the position that the son found himself in. The father saw him coming. That tells us and leads us to believe here in this passage of scripture, in these verses here, that the father was looking for his son's return. It tells us when we fall into that estranged fellowship with God that we are, we are distant, that we have moved away from God. God has never moved away from us, that we have moved away from God. God is waiting. God is looking for us to come to our senses, as this young man did in this story, to realize our condition and where we are and to come back to him. God's looking for that and he's waiting on for you and for me to do that. So listen what the father says about that to his servants. He says, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Listen, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to be merry. That is crucial 
in this story for us to understand that we, in an estranged relationship with God, we can return. He's waiting for us. He's expecting us. He's desiring us to come back to that fellowship. And it really only takes, on our part, a confession of that and repentance, a desire to turn away from our sins and to turn back to God and desire that relationship, fellowship with Him again. If you're an unbeliever, if you've never come to that place where you've developed a relationship with God, that's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is to place your faith and trust in Christ and what He did on the cross, dying for your sins so that you could have eternal life, so that you could have peace, so that you can have that relationship and that fellowship with God. Return to the Father is what the prodigal son story is talking about. Return to the Father and be restored as a son. The son was content with being a servant. God says, no, you are going to be considered as a son in my kingdom. So God bless you and I appreciate you watching.